When working on my last project, I found it difficult to find a guide to make a vertex warping shader in Unity, and the little I did find was written in high-level shade language, which I'm not versed in. Instead, I wanted to make the shader in the shader graph, as this is what I'm comfortable with. Luckily, I had worked on a similar effect in Unreal Engine before, and went about trying to match up the nodes between softwares as best I can. To save you these steps, this video is going to show you how to create a vertex warping shader using Unity's shader graph. It's not all that complicated, but for someone who may be new to the shader graph, having a step-by-step -step guide can be really useful. Just before we start, I'll explain how vertex warping works on a PS1. The PS1 could only work in integers, being whole numbers, and as such the screen space was set up like a grid almost. Vertices could only be rendered on the points of this grid, and nowhere in between, leading to the vertices snapping between points as the models moved. A modern system can use floating point numbers, decimals, allowing the screen to be a sea of rendering points allowing for a smooth movement. We're going to artificially turn the Unity screen space back into a grid using this shader. In your Unity scene, make sure you have the shader graph package installed, if you don't already. If not, go to Window and Package Manager. In here you can search for shader graph in Unity registry and click install. Give it a couple seconds. Now in your project browser, right click, create, shader graph, and then whichever render pipeline you are using. If you're unsure, just create a blank shader graph. Name it anything you'd like, but I recommend vertex warping. To check your render pipeline if you don't know, go to edit, project settings, and then here click graphics. This will show you the name of your render pipeline. In my case, it's URP. Now go back to your project browser and double click the shader graph asset. This will open the shader graph window. If you made a blank shader graph, you can now choose which renderer to use. Under Active Targets, click the plus button and choose your renderer. I'm using Universal. Everything can be left to in here as it is generally, other than whether you want the material to be lit or unlit. This is up to personal preference, but for a true PS1 fashion, you would probably want to use unlit. First, let's set up a texture so you can check the effect is working. Right click in the workspace and search for Sample Texture 2D, then add this node. Add a new Texture 2D parameter in the top left with the plus button. Drag this parameter into the workspace and connect the two nodes. Click Save Asset in the top left and return to Scene View. In your project window, right click the Shader Graph asset and click Create Material. This makes a material that's making use of this shader. Name this material as you wish. If you click on the material, you can now drag your texture into the slot in the shader on the right side. Then drag the material itself onto the model to display it. Now that's all set up, we can go back into the shader graph. Right click and create a position node, then set the space to view. Next create a divide node and plug the position node into the top slot. We're then going to create a new parameter to divide it by. Create a float and call it cell size. Set the default value to 0.1 in the node settings, as a zero the model will not be displayed. Next add a floor node to round down the value into a whole number as the PS1 also only works in whole number coordinates when rendering. We'll then multiply this by the cell size. This may seem counterintuitive dividing and then multiplying, but by using the floor node we've reduced the number of available points for the vertices to render in the camera, leading to the vertex jumping. Just look at the node preview, you can see all the cells in the multiply node. Now make a subtract node and plug the multiply node into the B value. After that you can copy and paste the position node from the start and plug this node into the A value of subtract. Now, I'm not an expert at shader graph, but in my understanding, this subtracts the altered screen space values from the original ones, allowing the screen space to be turned into a smaller grid with smaller point values, something like 0 to 100, as opposed to working with the precision of 1920 by 1080 float values. This is not necessarily important to know how to make the graph work, but understanding it can help with future graphs you make. Finally, we need to actually make this affect the vertices. Create another position node, but this time set it to object. Then create an add node. Plug the object position into A and the subtract node into B. Next, plug this all into vertex position, and as if by magic, the preview material now looks rather cube-like. Again, I'm not an expert, but I believe by adding the manipulated screen space to the object space, Unity is trying to take into account the position of the vertices in relation to the new low-resolution view, and then trying to display them along it. If nothing else, that means this means that the vertices will jump as your view changes. Be sure to click Save Asset and then return into Scene View. Depending on the size and scale of your model, you may notice that your model looks a bit too scrambled. To resolve this, you could click on the material and set the cell size in the inspector to something like 0.0001, 0 
but numbers like that are hard to work with. Instead, go back into the graph and create a divide node. Plug the cell size into this and then divide by a power of 10. I'm using 1000, but it depends on your scaling. Take the output and plug it into the original divide node and do the same for the multiply node. Save the asset and go back to scene view. Now the shader should be all done. If you can't see any warping, play around with the cell size value, making it bigger, and move around the camera to see the vertices start jumping. If your cell size value needs to be something like 100 to work, maybe reduce the value you're dividing a cell size by in your graph. Also, if you change your mind on a lit or unlit shader at any point, you can go back into the graph and change this in the graph settings. I made use of this shader and more in my new game, Hell to Pay. If you found this tutorial helpful, please consider checking out the game on my itch.io page. I'll leave a link to it in the description and it's completely free to play.